Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my new channel CNC's and Woodworking. Uh, in my previous video we talked a little bit about creating text or creating a sign using a logo and today I want to cover creating a sign from a font or from a typeface. I uh, kind of promised that I would make a video like that uh, and I had intended on making it with the other video but that one went a little long and it got a little crazy so I didn't want to try and combine the two and overwhelm people. I don't think people are going to be on YouTube watching two and a half hour long videos and I wouldn't want to either. So I thought I'd just make this into a separate one. So a lot of the things that we're going to cover in this one are things that we already covered before. I'm not going to cover those in great detail. So if you feel like you're missing some steps or, or, or something that maybe it would be best for you to go back and watch that video. Um, I'm not going to go through the, uh, um, expanding the pass or shrinking the pass again because I just don't think it needs to be double covered but anyway we're gonna jump right back into it uh, same software as before illustrator and fusion so uh, before we go into those I just want to hop on to Firefox really really quickly and talk about a couple of web pages so the first one here is Defont. Uh, Defont's a great resource for finding fonts. Um, it's got a great feature up here that you can kind of filter all the different fonts out. So if you're looking for something specific, like a bold font or a script font or gothic or something like that, you can use this filter option up here to kind of find anything and everything that you want. The second one I want to talk about is a website called What the Font. What the Font is great. So if you're out in the wild uh, getting food with your wife or your husband and you see a font or you see something on a menu or you see it on a sign and you're like, man, that thing is awesome. I wish I knew what that font was called. Well, that's what what the font is for. So you can actually come to this website. You can snap a picture of it with your phone. You can go onto this website and you can upload that picture. It'll have you crop in on a single letter and then it'll try and match it up with a font that exists in a database. Now, this doesn't have to be on the font. It doesn't have to be on any specific site. It might be on their personal site, but this one kind of scrapes the internet for all the fonts and sort of puts it all in one spot. So if you like a font, you can't find it anywhere, this is a great resource to try and hunt that font down. So those are two great websites, and I'll put those websites in the description so you guys can get to them easily. And I uh, just kicked my stand, so sorry if that makes loud noises. Um, so those are those two sites. So uh, if you have any questions or anything about those, let me know, and I'll try to answer those in the comments. But let's go ahead and get started with our tutorial today. We're going to jump into Illustrator, and we're going to create uh, a new file here. So I'm just going to stick with my, my same sizing. I'm probably not going to make a sign that big um, or small for that matter uh, for this kind of font just because it's a really tight font and it'll you know, make us have to do all those offsetting a lot. But for the purpose of simplicity, I'm just gonna use that size today. So now that it's open, you got your canvas here. Today we're gonna need two different windows open. So you can click on your Windows file, uh, your, your Windows selection here. And the only two we really need open are your properties manager. Uh, your properties are gonna be for changing your font, changing your font size, changing the spacing, things like that and your Pathfinder. Pathfinder I'll talk about a little later, but that has to do with joining letters and stuff. So have those two open, that'll make your life a little easier. So now that you've gone to the font and you've found the font that you wanna use, it's time to create your sign. So we'll go to our text tool here. We'll just make a simple text and we'll just type in uh, something real easy. So I'm just, for today, I'm just gonna type in my name, Nick. Um, we're just, just gonna make it easier for us. Uh, the, the, more, <clears throat> the more text you have, uh, the more chances you're going to run into having individual lettering where you're going to have to tab those letters. So the more text, the more cut time. So everybody kind of knows that, but I just want to make sure everybody knows about it. And actually, you know what? We're going to try and we're going to try something a little different because we want to throw a couple of little loopholes in here just so we can cover everything. Let's just uh, type in my YouTube name. and season woodworking now that we got that go ahead and give that a little highlight there and we're gonna come over here to our property panels and we're just gonna hover over this you don't have to hit these little up and down buttons or this little drop down menu just hover over this and use your scroll wheel to make that bigger you don't necessarily have to do this step but it makes it a little easier so you can see everything 
then we'll come over here to our direct uh, or our uh, um, what is that yeah selection tool and we'll just drag that over here so it's a little bit more centered now we're gonna go back to our text tool and highlight that and you can come over here to your characters panel and you can start uh, selecting your font so you can do that one of two ways you can either hit this little drop down menu and that's gonna show you all the fonts that you have in here or you can if you know the name of the font you can just start typing it in so the one that I'm going to use today is called Billion Dreams. So we're going to click on that, and then I'll change your font for you here. So now that we've got that, in the previous video, what we would do from this stage is we'd go over to um, our objects and go to Image Trace and do a live trace. But as you can see, that's grayed out, and it's not going to work in this particular instance because this is a typeface. So, so what we want to do is actually come over to this type over here and you want to make sure that you're on this little direct selection tool and have this selected. Don't be on your type tool or anything because that's going to uh, change things for you. So what you want to do is come over to type and you want to just click on create outline. So that's kind of the same situation as creating a path. So as you can see now we have a nice path here. But as you can also see, if you can see these little areas right here, um, it has these little pieces where it overlaps and that's not going to be good for when we come in to cut it because what's going to happen is it's going to follow these lines so you're going to have this like weird little etched out area right here in your O and then your O is going to be the same style as what it should be so what we want to do is actually uh, we actually want to combine all of these so you basically make it so it cuts off there and then it creates that path and that path falls through into all the letters so that's what we're going to need our pathfinder tool for so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and move this in the center here. Uh, so if you've got your Pathfinder open, all you need to do is make sure everything is selected. Come over here to where it says Shape Modes and click on Unite. And as you can see, that kind of took everything away there, and that makes a nice clean path that follows all the way through. So that's going to be important for when we go into Fusion and take care of that. So now that we've got that taken care of, it's time to do what we should have done already which is to save our file. So we're gonna come up to File, Save. You can save that as anything. Um, I'll just call this CNC. We're gonna save that to the desktop. Okay. And now we're gonna export our SVG. So save as. Come down here, make sure you change that to SVG. And we'll save that on the desktop as well. And we'll just call that CNC SVG. So save that, hit OK, and now we're done in Illustrator. So a lot more simple than working with the logo, but I did want to do the logo because it was more difficult. So now you can close this out, and we're going to hop into Fusion. So now that we got Fusion open, we're just going to create a new sketch. And again, we're going to make sure we're on the top here just to make things easier. And we're going to come up to Insert and insert SVG. You can click on this little folder here and navigate to wherever we saved that SVG file. Hit open and as you can see that pops up right there. So we're just going to quickly center that and now you've got that so we can uh, hit OK on here. We can finish our sketch and as you can see it's nice and, and smooth and all of them have their own separate paths, which is great. So this is kind of what I was talking about before. So you see how the C isn't connected to the N. So that's going to be a problem for when we go to cut it out because you're going to have to put tabs on these. Not a problem per se, but it's just going to take longer because you have to add tabs to those. And that's going to be true about the ampersand and a couple other letters that are in here. But we're not going to worry about that today. We're just going to assume that you understand it's going to take longer and um, that's just how it works. So we'll just zoom in here. Sometimes it makes it easier for me if I'm nice and zoomed in for me to select these individual ones. So we're just going to come up to each one of those, hold shift and click, and just select each one of these insides of these here. <clears throat> okay, so now we got all those selected. We're going to come up to extrude. And I know that I'm working with three quarter inch plywood today, and I know that my plywood is 19 millimeters thick, so I'm going to type in 19 millimeters. 
and we're just gonna wait for that to extrude and it's done and as you can see unlike the last video where it was gray now it's a wood color and the reason for that is I've actually set my preferences to be wood because I don't deal with steel or metal for the most part so if you'd like to do that you can actually just come up to here to where it has your name you just click on that you go to preferences and when your preferences is open there's gonna be a long list of stuff here you're just gonna go down to materials and then right here you can select any of the materials you want as default and it'll make sure that you're working with that every time you create stuff that just makes it a little easier for me it doesn't really change anything as far as when we go to cut but it just makes it a little easier so I know when I opened a design that my intention was to to cut this out of wood and they, there's a lot of choices I mean you can change different types of wood you can do paints and plastics all kinds of things so it's it's pretty cool to know so now that we've got this taken care of we're ready to take it into our manufacturing and get this thing cut out so I'm not gonna cover that today because I think it's redundant if you've seen my previous video I'll go into I go into depth about how to set this up for your CNC but primarily I just wanted to walk everyone through how to get this from Illustrator to fusion and how to work with the fonts and where to find them so as you can see now now I've got this text nice and cut out and you know looks thick but keep in mind that it's gonna be quite small at that size so you know I don't necessarily recommend uh, cutting something this small but if you do more power to you um, I would probably uh, recommend if you wanted it to be thick but you also wanted it to be small is to work with woods that are a little thinner so you can try it out an eighth inch or something like that and maybe just layer them so that's what I would do anyway that's about it um, thanks for watching and if you guys have any comments or complaints or concerns or recommendations on videos I should do hit me up in the comments and I'll try to get to those videos as soon as I can alright thanks guys